कॉफी लीफ रस्ट मैनेजमेंट कॉफी कल्टीवेशन इन इंडिया इज यूनिक एज इट इज टोटली शेड ग्रोन एंड एनवायरमेंट फ्रेंडली बाई कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टूवर्ड्स मेंटेनेंस ऑफ फॉरेस्ट कवर एंड प्रिजर्विंग द रिच बायोडाइवर्सिटी ऑफ फ्लोरा एंड फॉना It is predominantly a small grower enterprise providing livelihood to nearly 6 lakh people in the production process and to several thousands in the coffee marketing chain. Coffee cultivation has had a long and tumultuous history from the British entrepreneurs to the present Indian coffee grower. This is because of the relatively harsh climatic conditions under which coffee is grown. in the hilly tracts of india compared to other major coffee growing countries coffee diseases are the principal production constraint in many countries especially for small holder farms with limited management resources under the indian conditions coffee plants are subject to infection by various fungal diseases like coffee leaf rust black rot coffee trunk canker and root diseases Fortunately both viral and bacterial diseases are absent The coffee leaf rust popularly known as CLR is the major disease of concern because of its wide distribution and ability to cause substantial crop losses Coffee leaf rust is one of the earliest major tropical plant disease reported it is a classical disease considered to have originated on wild coffee in ethiopia but was first reported on cultivated coffee from sri lanka in 1869 the arabica coffee cultivation in sri lanka to such an extent that the country became a tea producer later the disease spread to nearby indonesia and india By late 19th century the disease appeared in majority of the coffee growing countries including that of South and Central Americas causing enormous financial losses Among the cultivated species of coffee the species Coffea arabica or arabica coffee shows varying levels of susceptibility to the rust Other species like Coffea canifora or robusta coffee and tree coffee like coffea liberica are less susceptible the coffee leaf rust is caused by the fungus hemilia vastatrix this fungus is an obligate parasite which means it survives only on living tissue it requires a specific host in this case coffee to complete its life cycle as the name suggests the rust primarily attacks the coffee leaves especially the young leaves The life cycle of the rust fungus is very complex during which thousands of tiny spores are produced which can disperse with the help of rain splashes water or wind the spores land on the leaves germinate and enter the leaf tissue through the stomata which are located on the lower surface of the leaves initially pale yellow colored and circular spots or lesions of 2 to 4 mm diameter appear on the lower surface of the leaves which later turn yellow and then to an orange powdery mass of uredospores these lesions gradually spread on the entire lower leaf surface as they coalesce with the adjacent spots with aging the central portion of the lesions becomes brownish and later necrotic whereas the outer zone of the lesions continues to sporulate severely infected leaves fall off leading to heavy defoliation and die back of branches a coffee plant can lose a substantial amount of foliage when infected by the coffee leaf rust pathogen this disease is a serious constraint to sustainable arabica coffee production it is known to cause crop losses of the order of 30 to 60% depending on the resistance of the plant material under cultivation and the management measures adopted the impact on crop yields is significant as both current years as well as the following years crop are affected 
When a coffee plant does not have the optimal number of leaves due to defoliation, photosynthetic area is reduced, leading to less production and storage of food reserves. This severely impacts fruit production and bean development, leading to poor quality of the beans and more number of floats. Under proper management, it may take one or two years for the plant to recover and yield normally. The favorable factors for disease development have been found to be intermittent rain and sunshine during June to September with temperature from 22 to 24 degrees centigrade, relative humidity of 80% and above and prolonged leaf wetness during the post-monsoon period, either due to mist or rain. Thin overhead shade and physiological stress of the coffee plants due to high production also contribute to development of the disease. Though the disease is observed throughout the year in India, the disease manifestation can be categorized into four phases like period of extension, period of intensification, period of defoliation and period of inactivity. During the period of extension, which is normally from April to September, the rust pustules present on the older leaves produce fresh spores. After the recipe of blossom and backing showers, disease buildup gradually takes place on the older leaves as well as new foliage produced consequent to the recipe of rain. From September to November, which is the period of intensification, the disease attains peak by infecting the young leaves produced during August and September. During the period of defoliation from December to January, the infected leaves are shed leading to dieback of the branches. January to March is the period of inactivity due to low night temperature and less humidity. The pathogen survives in the form of mycelia on the infected leaves. Arabica coffee is more susceptible to leaf rust than Robusta and hence requires timely plant protection measures to keep the disease incidence under check and to get better yield. As this disease is capable of inflicting heavy crop losses, it is important to follow an integrated disease management approach using all the interventions available. The integrated disease management strategy includes growing disease-tolerant Arabica varieties, pruning and handling of the coffee bushes, maintaining the vigor of the plants by application of balanced nutrients and timely application of prophylactic and systemic fungicides. Growing disease-tolerant cultivars is the first and most preferred and viable option for managing the coffee leaf rust. This would result in less use of chemicals, thereby bringing down the cost of cultivation. The coffee breeding program in India has led to development of resistant and tolerant Arabica varieties. But breakdown of resistance has been frequently observed due to the evolution of new virulent races of CLR pathogen. The coffee leaf rust pathogen has an ability to form new physiological races to overcome the resistance of a particular plant variety. Among the 45 rust races of the pathogen reported from different countries, so far, 35 races are reported to be distributed across the Indian coffee growing tracts. In spite of this vast rust diversity, the improved Arabica selections from the Central Coffee Research Institute, such as Selection 5A, 5B, 6, 9, and Chandragiri manifest a wide spectrum of field tolerance. Depending on the location, these selections can be chosen for cultivation. The cultural method of control is aimed at reducing the inoculum potential of the pathogen. This can be achieved by maintaining optimum shade using a two-tier system of permanent and temporary shade trees. This helps in controlling overbearing of the plants, which in turn reduces the severity of the rust infection. 
Maintaining the plant architecture also contributes to reduction in rust intensity. During the dry period, the rust pathogen survives on the older coffee leaves in the form of mycelia and uredospores. Pruning and handling of the coffee plants after harvest from January to February helps to reduce the initial inoculum. The spores released during this operation cannot infect the healthy leaves due to the unfavorable climatic conditions. Chemical control is generally practiced to control the disease intensity. It can be used as a prophylactic measure or as a curative. Spraying of freshly prepared half percent Bordeaux mixture as a prophylactic measure is found to be effective for the management of leaf rust. It provides prolonged protection against leaf rust, black rot and stock rot and helps in retention of foliage leading to increased yield. Bordeaux mixture should be freshly prepared before application. To prepare the half percent Bordeaux mixture, dissolve 1 kg of copper sulfate in 5 liters of water by suspending it in a gunny bag or cloth. This should be done during the previous night as copper sulfate takes time to dissolve. On the day of taking up field spraying, prepare the lime solution by adding 1 kg of spray lime in 5 liters of water to get a concentrated solution. Add this concentrated lime solution to 190 liters of water taken in a barrel and stir continuously. Once the lime has mixed thoroughly, add 5 liters of the copper sulfate stock solution slowly with constant stirring using a wooden stirrer. The copper sulfate and lime used should be of good quality resulting in a highly alkaline spray solution with a pH of about 9 to 10. It is recommended to apply two rounds of half percent Bordeaux mixture as pre and post monsoon applications for achieving effective control. The pre-monsoon spray should be taken up before the onset of monsoon. In the southwest monsoon areas, the spray should be done during May-June. For northeast monsoon areas, the ideal period would be June to July. As the foliage would be less during these periods, the quantity of spray solution required would be around 5 to 6 barrels per acre. The post-monsoon application is done during September to October in the southwest monsoon areas and in the northeast monsoon areas. During this period, the quantity of spray solution required would be around 7 to 8 barrels per acre. The Bordeaux mixture should be applied in such a way that the lower surfaces of the leaves are well covered. Systemic fungicides can also be used for the management of leaf rust. They have curative and prophylactic action and can prevent sporulation of the rust pathogen. Field studies have shown that the systemic fungicides like hexaconazole at 0.01%, 400 ml per 200 liters or triadimephon at the dosage of 0.02%, 160 grams per 200 liters can be used for the control of leaf rust. They may be used only on leaf rust susceptible coffee cultivars. For complete coverage of the plants in one acre of land, about three barrels of the solution would be required. As systemic fungicides are used during the post-monsoon period, strictly avoid usage at the time of fruit ripening to prevent the possibility of fungicide residues in the coffee beans. In spite of the availability of very efficient integrated rust management strategies, off late the coffee planters are experiencing difficulties in rust management due to shortage of labor. Sometimes timely application of prophylactic Bordeaux mixture could not be taken up due to change in rainfall pattern. 
Because of these constraints, a few coffee growers are trying to adopt mechanization of spray operations. Some of the enterprising growers have developed innovative spraying equipment. The Government of India is also encouraging mechanization of farm operations like pruning of trees, harvesting and spraying by providing developmental support through coffee board. The coffee planters can take advantage of these initiatives for efficient management of rust disease to minimize the crop losses. The coffee leaf rust disease is a serious constraint for profitable cultivation of Arabica coffee in all the coffee growing countries, especially for the small holder farms. Coffee rust is not a problem to be addressed in isolation and needs concerted efforts of the World Coffee Research Fraternity. The ICO CFC project on coffee leaf rust is one such effort wherein various strategies such as sharing of resistant varieties between the participating countries, production and distribution of improved planting materials to farmers, on-farm trials with fungicides and botanicals for devising appropriate disease control strategies and spread of knowledge about the disease management to the coffee farmers have been planned and implemented. The initiative of the International Coffee Organization, London, and the funding agency, the Common Fund for Commodities, based at Amsterdam, in supporting this project on the leaf rust has to be lauded. This short film on coffee leaf rust in India is an output of the project. The support provided by the CFC and ICO is gratefully acknowledged.